Hi everyone. So uh, BTC has went up to 56K and e has, ETH is at all time high too. So the crypto industry is alive and moving fast. Uh, our company broadcast.cc has captured all these moments since 2017. My name is Keith, uh, CCO of uh, broadcast.cc. Broadcast.cc is a broadcast news source for the broadcast community. Found in Singapore, we have a network of partners in China, Hong Kong, uh, South Korea, Singapore, and Malaysia. So we also help uh, global broadcast and cryptocurrency companies to achieve their marketing, uh, PR, and advertising goals since 2017. Uh, we have been interviewing interesting people in the blockchain space. Today, we have Mr. Thomas Emmerich, Director of Epic Knowledge Ecosystem. Hi, Thomas. Nice, uh, nice to have you here. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. It's a pleasure to be here. Yep. Uh, so, um, uh, could you, um, would you please briefly introduce Epic Projects and the team background? Sure, Keith. Thank you very much. And thank you once again for having me today. Yeah. Um, Epic is a compound word and it comes from two words, epigraphy and knowledge. The meaning of knowledge engraved on the stone, which is also the original intention of the project. That is to process human knowledge into knowledge comprehensible for machines and to store that knowledge on the blockchain eternally for machines to read it safely and to have it credibly applied to various applications for artificial intelligence. For friends not engaged in the artificial intelligence industry, they may not understand the difference between knowledge to humans and knowledge understandable to machines. Yeah. Current human knowledge whose carrier are most mostly articles, pictures, video, audio, and encyclopedias are collectively called unstructured data. The one-by-one -one answers to these front questions are called background knowledge. So how do machines acquire background knowledge? The, the current industry-wide accepted solution is uh, for a knowledge graph. So what Epic uh, does is extract the knowledge from the carrier of human knowledge, such as the articles, the pictures, the videos, and the mm -hmm. audio, and processing it into a special a data format that the machine can understand. For the machine to use for building its own background knowledge. And then the machine can provide uh, more intelligent services based on such background knowledge. For example, combing human insurance knowledge after learning these knowledge machine can not only provide us intelligent recommendation of insurance strategy, but also guide us to underwrite more efficiently. The knowledge graph is like a neuron, if, if, if you want. Um, the denser it is, the smarter it is. Intelligent, the hope, yeah, intelligent, the hopefully we can work out super powerful background knowledge base and possibly turn this thing we call Siri into something we know as Jarvis, the <laughs> intelligent <laughs> assistant <laughs> of okay. Iron Man. Um, Epic was born um, uh, where it came from. Epic was born at the National University uh, of Singapore oh. uh, during the outbreak of the uh, pandemic in March last year. Uh, we have James uh, who had the preliminary idea and uh, he quickly found uh, two other people, Leo and Sigrid they thought that the construction of knowledge graphs should not only store hash value of data on the chain, but also store all data on the chain. After seeing IPFS, Filecoin, Arweave, and Swarm, they found it impossible to embed the economic model of knowledge graph collaboratively uh, into a network seamlessly into them. So they finally decided to build a two-layer network for it on Filecoin. Based on Filecoin's replication proof of space-time proof strategy. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, yeah, so after the outbreak was alleviated, uh, the founding team went to Shenzhen in June mm -hmm. last year to learn about the current state of decentralized storage ecology. Um, feeling the time is right though, they officially launched Epic Protocol. Mm -hmm. Later, more excellent partners joined us after nearly a year of hard work. We finally have a chance to come to blockcast.cc and Thank introduce you our program. <laughs> really, thank you for that uh, very great. Yeah. So um, we understand the EPIC goal is to lead all community participants to share the domain knowledge graph data to expand AR awareness and to go on on a different track. 
of storage. Yeah, different track of storage. Yeah, so what are the difference between Epic and other storage projects like um, such as uh, IPFS uh, and what are their characteristic and advantages? Yeah, so Keith, um, IPFS is an unstimulated distributed data transfer protocol while Epic has an excitation layer. Um, mm. I'll talk more about the difference between Epic and the Filecoin, which also has a motivation layer. Mm. First of all, from the technical level, current incentive mechanism of Filecoin emphasizes the stability of single files stored in one copy. Mm. And the storage incentive is far greater than the bandwidth incentive, which is more suitable for the cold storage of large files on the whole. While Epic's incentive mechanism emphasizes multiple backup storage on a single file and the storage incentive and bandwidth incentive are closely related, which is more suitable for the hot storage of small files. Oh, okay. Secondly, from the application level, Filecoin focuses on meeting anyone's any storage needs and has no requirement for data quality. As long as the storage cost is paid, it can be used to store either encyclopedias or dirty data. Epic mm -hmm. focuses on meeting the orderly storage requirements in specific fields and has clear requirements for data quality. Storage is completely free, but to qualify for storage requires support by voting in the community. Oh, Epic okay. and yeah, so Epic and Filecoin complement each other. Epic collects ordered knowledge graph type small log files in each field, giving full play to the advantages of Epic small file hot storage and then periodically restore the small log files into small snapshot files to upload to Filecoin for snapshot backup, giving full play of the advantage of Filecoin large file cold storage, and then continue to provide effective oh, data for okay. Filecoin. Yeah. So, yeah, so we say that Epic is the knowledge graph data folder on Filecoin mm -hmm. large file system, and the layer two network of Filecoin is the knowledge graph vertical mm -hmm. domain. Okay, so knowing that Epic has uh, has game based knowledge graph data data acquisition products called knowledge mainland. Uh, so can you introduce what is a knowledge mainland uh, and what is what is this uh, working principle? Sure, um, knowledge mainland. It, it's a complex to human knowledge into forms of human knowledge graph, which can be understood by machine. Um, many oh. processes, such as middle collection, integration, and disambiguation, can't be fully automated and need a lot of manual annotation. Moreover, the annotation of knowledge graph data is more difficult than the traffic lights we commonly use in verification codes. For example, insurance knowledge graph data. People without insurance knowledge may not be suitable to participate in annotating such data. Mm. So, so Epic designed a bounty hunter role that allows to complete a series of certifications to unlock the role of a bounty hunter, where each person can complete a series of certifications to unlock marking tasks in different areas and participate in knowledge graph together. Yep. Sorry about that. No, no, uh, sure. information coming in. So Epic mm -hmm. designed a bounty hunter role that allows everyone to complete the certifications. Mm -hmm. Oh. Knowledge Mainland is the first app in the Epic ecosystem for uh, Bounty Hunter to complete the task of annotating missions. Considering the marking work itself is a very boring work, in order to let everyone easily participate in annotating, Knowledge Mainland adopted a game-like way. The story background is that the Knowledge Mainland is the human civilization Let's say we're destroyed due to some external forces. <laughs> okay. So they need to depend on everyone to recollect human civilization puzzles. And those explorers who participate in the restoration of human civilization can be awarded what we call EPK tokens. Mm. At present, okay. Knowledge Mainland has started <clears throat> internal testing in order to allow everyone to participate in the initial annotation with threshold of zero. Knowledge Mainland choose to release the first question bank of voice question bank that can be participated in without any professional knowledge. The questions for Chinese users are mainly ancient poems and numbers. <clears throat> While the questions we have for overseas users are mainly 
uh, film lines for movies and numbers. These question banks are from our experts in voice fields of open SLR. <clears throat> the Epic Foundation is recruiting the first batch of domain experts, some of whom have been identified covering the fields of digital economy, video games, healthcare, rural industrial structure, and so forth. Wow, that's cool and white and cool. <laughs> yeah. It is, it's, it's yeah. very vast. Yeah. They are also homing question banks in their fields and these questions will be posted to Knowledge Mainland to meet with you. Mm -hmm. On the first day of internal uh, test of Knowledge Mainland, the Chinese and English communities have answered 11,661 <laughs> questions and collected thousands of voice yeah. data. The invitation uh, function is under development and will start um, after the internal test is more stable. Yeah. So, so what what uh, position does a knowledge mainland have in the Epic ecosystem, and how does it help the project vision to be fruition? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Keith. Yeah. Um, uh, knowledge mainland is the first annotation application in our mm -hmm. Epic ecosystem, mm -hmm. which has a significant milestone. But Knowledge Mainland will not be the only annotation app in the Epic ecosystem. Different areas may have different requirements for annotation. Mm -hmm. Some can be completed on the mobile phone, some might not. Uh, we do welcome the introduction of more annotating tools in the Epic ecology and to help field experts better distribute tax, tasks, mm -hmm. but also to help the bounty hunters complete tasks more efficiently as well. Yep. So, so can you tell us a, a little bit about the economic model of EPIC tokens and uh, how the value of EPK tokens is represented? Yeah, so EPIC's economic model is centered around four main roles within the ecosystem. And they are the miners, uh, the domain experts, the bounty hunters, and the knowledge gateways. The domain expert is responsible for organizing the production and accepting the knowledge graph data. The bounty hunter is responsible for helping the domain expert to collect the process uh, and knowledge graph data. The miner is responsible for storing and accessing the, the data. And the knowledge gateway is responsible for providing API services for the data. 75% of EPK daily mined by the whole network is awarded to the miner group. Mm. Each mining machine needs a thousand EPK foundation pledge to obtain qualification to participate in the block output. The more data stored, the higher the calculation power and the higher the rate of block output. Mm. You can obtain reward once the output a block. The block output reward will begin to be released after seven days but will be fully released in the following seven days. Because only domain experts can upload data, miners can't scan data themselves. They only get data they do not have from other miners in the network, which requires access mortgage to obtain access traffic. Um, a mortgage, uh, so for example, a mortgage of one EPK can be read, <clears throat> can read 10 megabyte data um, from the network every day. The more mortgage, the more traffic can be read daily. For any new file, the first 100 miners who complete the storage can get double the amount of hash rate. In addition to 75% of the EPK allocated to miners, 9% of the EPK mined every day will be given to the domain expert group. Each domain expert divvies up the reward in real time according to their own contributions to the amount of data. In order to avoid a large gap in the scale of data in different fields, the system will calculate the weight after taking a lot of the data amount contributed by all the domain experts. In addition, in order to avoid the, the evil of domain experts, yeah. e each domain expert can only be nominated mm -hmm. by someone who is already a domain expert. And they would need 100,000 EPK votes from the community after nomination. Nominees who have already been nominated enough by voting can be qualified as a domain expert and can upload data to share income or can nominate others. The daily earnings of the domain expert cannot be withdrawn until the seven days. The rogue domain expert can be blacklisted by voting though of a group of domain experts. The domain expert who is blacklisted will not be able to withdraw the reward. 
and the domain expert who nominates the domain expert who is penalized will also be penalized. Mm -hmm. This is how we keep checks and balances. Um, and, and the number of votes he needs for the qualification of domain expert will be increased by 25,000 wow. of each blacklisted person he nominated. Okay. So there's definitely a security <laughs> measure in yeah. place. For this. In order to encourage people to vote though, 1% of EPK mined by the whole network every day will be given to all the people who participate in the voting. The more the vote, the more they share the income. As long as they yeah. vote, they can share the income. And that has nothing to do whether or not the person voted is a domain expert or not. <clears throat> Finally, there is 15% of EPK left in the whole network. The part, this part will introduce an index of uh, access demand, which is the proportion of EPK pledged by the whole network for access to data to the total circulation of EPK. The higher the proportion is, which means the better the whole network data quality is, the remaining 15% of EPK will be allocated more to miners to enhance bandwidth and app optimize access performance. But the opposite is also true. So if the proportion is not high, which means that data quality needs to be strengthened, then the remaining 15% of the EPK will be allocated more to bounty hunters so that they can do more annotation tasks to op optimize the quality of the data. It's like, when you're having more visitors in a library. Uh, in a library, it requires more seats if you have more visitors. Uh, and if that's the case, we it means that you have to pay the miners to increase the bandwidth. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's expensive. So yeah, yeah, so if there's less <laughs> visitors, then you, you, you're taking away the seats. In order to attract oh. more people, you need to buy better quality books in the mm. library to attract mm. the visitors, which yeah. means that's where we would be giving the bounty hunters. Um, uh, and the domain experts more quality knowledge. Uh, great. But I think I think that's that's a very interesting kind of concept. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so anyway, Epic was listed in uh, uh, three exchange. Yeah. Okay. MCXC, uh, Bitmart, Hobbit recently. So is it in the planning? And uh, what investment uh, what investment institution behind Epic that make it so favored by the market? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Keith. Um, at present, the Epic team is preparing the launch of the mainnet. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of help from our friends in the community who assisted us in connecting with the exchange. Uh, before we do launch on the mainnet, though, miners need mortgage, and improving EPK liquidity can make that happen. Epic is doing something that is not limited to the blockchain industry. We are working with Data Fun Talk, uh, Data Union, and OpenKG to be better achieve Epic's goal of building a decentralized knowledge graph network. So in addition to institutions such as FBG and 1475, who have a profound capacity for decentralized storage, we also have Jackdaw with the license for legal access, mm -hmm. as well as right. network data, which is experienced with hardware and cluster, IDC and Klim fund with huge data resources which assists in the project development. We are all very grateful for all of their support. Okay, so next interesting question. So how can user participate in uh, Epic ecosystem? And can you share the uh, mining tutorials and um, how can they benefit more from this? Yeah, we, uh, we can definitely do that, Keith. Um, there's gonna be links for sharing um, so that everybody can access it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can now choose to be a miner and participate in our testnet pre-mining activities. Uh, there will be a link that follows. Um, there are 10,000 EPK rewards every day to help us better uh -huh. test. Okay. Yeah, you, you can also choose to become a bounty hunter um, and download the knowledge mainland to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. There are 500 EPK uh, re rewards distributed to each hour on average every day. You can also apply to become one of our domain experts uh, and organize human knowledge into a knowledge graph in your own field of expertise. So there's quite a few choices. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's basically whatever your strength is. Um, lean to whatever your strength is or your interest. Yeah, you guys actually anticipate what kind of a user is uh, is coming through. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, can you tell us about Epic follow up development plans and the future goals? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, you can now choose, 
in, in the, sh the short term girl, uh, goal for Epic is to serve the miners well and to find more domain experts. There's also a de desire to build showcases in one or two fields and to perfect the tools for construction in the decentralized knowledge graph in a, in a closed loop collaboration. Okay, um, so we, we have one final question. So, sure. uh, so it's a question and uh, can you share with us uh, and our viewers an uh, inspiration quote? From you, it's, Mr. Thomas Emmerich. Inspiration quote yeah. for me. So, um, in the, in the time that we're going through right now, uh, with the pandemic, it comes, it goes, it comes, it goes, and yeah. it's it's global. Uh, it doesn't just affect one country, one city, uh, one community. It's it's, and I think that's all the talk right now. Um, but I do hear and I do see a lot of people um, excelling. There are people that are having a tough time, and then there are people that are um, just looking at opportunity. And I think, I think that is the quote. I, it's not going to be a profound quote. Um, there is a lot of uh, profound quotes already yeah. out there. Um, but um, the quote that I would say is, there's opportunity everywhere. Uh, you can either look inside yourself and see mm -hmm. what potential you have. And this is one of the reasons why we are reaching out for people to join us. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of business opportunity. I know that ever since I started with Epic uh, and the team at Epic, mm -hmm. it's, it's been fantastic. There's been a lot of support and it's incredible to see all the support come from all the, the other participants and, and businesses in our field. So mm -hmm. even though we are struggling, um, in the whole uh, globally, I do want to share that there are a lot of great things happening, mm -hmm. and it's for us to make sure that people realize that. Yep. I'm sorry because yeah. So 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 <laughs> yeah. So um um. Anyway um uh we we have a we have a limited time for for the for the schedule. So anyway, thank you uh, thank you, Mr. Thomas uh, Amarish, and really appreciate your time and uh. We really appreciate your time, your insight. So for you and the rest, and uh, rest well and good night. Yep. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Keith. Yeah. I had a pleasure. Yeah. It was nice yeah. talking to you too. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.